Hey guys, so you can't really escape Halloween here on YouTube, so I thought for a Halloween special video I might teach you how to uh, do a little bit of chroma keying but throw a little bit of novelty on it as well. So today I'm going to try and show you guys how to make yourselves look like a floating head using nothing more than a green screen, Caden Live and the latest version of Manjaro. Now of course you can use other distributions and you can use other video editing programs on Linux but those are going to be the tools that I'm using today because they're the ones I regularly use and well I personally feel that they're the best but to each their own everyone has their own use case. So this is a fun little trick. Uh, basically if you haven't guessed already I've just wrapped myself up from the neck down in a green screen sheet uh, and uh, I can show you actually what it looks like without the movie magic. As you can see, it looks pretty unremarkable. Um, there are a few things that you do need to bear in mind when you're setting up. Uh, you want your lighting to be as consistent and generally as bright as possible. Uh, you want as few sort of creases in your uh, invisibility cloak as possible, and by which I mean green screen. And also, if you can, uh, it's also worth having a light source behind you just to give you a bit of uh, a bit of a contrast there and just to sort of um, stop the uh, the green from the green screen bleeding in to the background. So without further ado, let's get on to Caden Live. Uh, I am on my daily driver of Manjaro XFCE and I'll show you how to do some basic chroma keying. Okay, so now I'm going to be showing you how to achieve that chroma keying effect using Caden Live on my uh, Manjaro XFCE daily driver distribution. You can, of course, use other Linux distributions and other video editing software, but I do have to say that Caden Live is by far the most full featured video editor on Linux uh, that I've found. Uh, it can crash from time to time, especially with more complex projects, but uh, that being said, the auto recovery features are very good, and if you just save regularly, you should generally be okay. So I'm just going to break it down for you now, but one of the things, I'm just going to give you a few tips on uh, setting up the shot because it can be a little bit tricky uh, filming for, uh, for um, chroma key effects as well. So what I did is I simply filmed myself with, uh, with the green screen wrapped around, around me, as you can see here in this not so flattering shot. Now uh, in an earlier clip, uh, in, in, a, in an earlier part of that clip, I also uh, removed myself completely from shot and then I took a still image from there. Now you can actually take a still image from any of the clips and any of the projects in Caden Live just by going to this options menu here and doing extract frame and whatever is in this window here the frame will be extracted so I just took a frame where I wasn't in it at all it looked like this and then I'm using that as the background then as the foreground I'm using this and effectively what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making any uh, showing of the color green to be transparent, effectively giving this headless horseman kind of effect, which is actually kind of quite cool. Okay, so uh, just to break down the project as well, you've got the uh, bottom track here, which is the audio track. You've got the other track, which is the, the, the backdrop track here on video one. Then you've got the foreground track, which is me wrapped up in the green screen. And then you've got this little track here, which you may remember at the beginning, where I just demonstrate that I'm actually just a guy wrapped up in a green sheet. So um, there are numerous tools at your disposal when it comes to chroma keying. Uh, you can also do things like desaturating um, and 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 uh, growing and, and shrinking the edges around a green screen as well. So even if you've got perhaps not the best uh, sort of uh, the best source material to work with, uh, there is a lot of correction that you can actually do. Now it is also worth bearing in mind that when you come to render chroma key effects it can take, it will take significantly longer uh, but I, I believe that just sort of comes with the territory when, when it comes to any kind of advanced video editing. So let's have a look at the actual chroma components. Now uh, one setting that I am using here is I'm just using the preview uh, the preview transparency. Uh, the, so this automatically composites all of these layers together. So uh, what I've got here, and this is the layer where all the effects are in place. I'm only going to be using two different um, effects here. So if I get rid of the chroma key here, and I should be able to get rid of the background here, that's right, you can see that I'm using something called alpha shapes. Now alpha shapes simply uh, just cuts out a shape 
um, and then play, uh, place it, well, effectively does that. And then I can replace the, the black there, which is effectively the transparency, with my backdrop here. And then it very simply just looks, you know, it just gives me a very, a very uh, sort of small cut um, section where it looks like I'm a bit like a headless horseman, but I've still got the, the sheet wrapped around me, so we're going to be chroma keying that up. You can adjust the position, you can adjust the size. So actually that just doesn't really uh, matter there. You can adjust the position, the size of the uh, um, the size of the x-axis, the size of the y-axis. So you can do that there, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then you can do the tilt. Uh, you can do the transition wi uh, width, which is how much it fades. So you've got so many options there. You can even use this little keyframe icon to actually move uh, the uh, move and adjust the position of the alpha shapes as um, as the uh, scene progresses. It's a very simple tool, and it's um, it is pretty useful when you want something that's quite straightforward in terms of. Uh, putting transparent areas in a scene. Now, the more complex elements, so I'm just going to disable that right now, and then I'm going to enable the chroma key. Now, as you can see here, this makes me look a little bit more like a ghost than it does completely invisible. Uh, this is because uh, I very foolishly recorded this scene using the automatic settings on my camera and not um, setting the manual uh, exposure and aperture uh, which would actually allow for a much more consistent setup, and I would almost be completely invisible if I did that. But not to worry, like I say, Caden Live can actually do quite a lot with even some poor source material. So, uh, if I combine the two effects, and also when it comes to chroma key, I should show you how to use it. Uh, you very simply just select a colour, and then you adjust the variance. Now this can involve a significant amount of trial and error as well, uh, and sometimes you can even use multiple um, chroma key effects if you've got sort of two colors um, that you really want to, uh, you know, that you've got to sort of both make transparent. And then you can just sort of apply both effects like so, and there you go. You have what is effectively the headless horseman effect uh, as seen at the beginning of the video. It's really simple. You've got plenty of other effects in the alpha manipulation section of the effects on Caden Live. You've got alpha gradients, uh, fill the alpha channel with a specific gradient. You've got um, alpha operations. Alpha operations, for example, well, they give you a lot of more sort of complex options when it comes to uh, the you know sort of manipulating the effects of the chroma key. Uh, key spill mop up as well is really uh, it's a really sort of useful set of tools that actually allows you to stop the green from sort of bleeding in on other places across the screen. You've got rotoscoping, but I've got to admit on this version of Caden Live, it is a little bit buggy and does cause it to crash. So I, it has worked on previous versions of Caden Live. I'm sure it will work on future versions, but just this particular version, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to show you now actually uh, about Caden Live. So this is the version that I'm currently using. It's an open source video editor using MLT version 6.2.0. Um, this is, yeah, so it's 1608.2 and it's all part of the KDE framework with Qt 5.7. So this is all quite new. It's all This is the version that's just available in the Manjaro repository. So feel free to go ahead and use that if you want the exact same version that you can see here today. Uh, obviously, you may be watching this video sometime in the future and thus uh, we'll be using a more updated version. And Caden Live, as great as it is, it fluctuates in its stability. So they'll release one release and it'll be super stable and it'll be great and you know sort of completely work ready. But then the next version can be a little bit um, sort of, well, it can crash quite a lot if you try, try to do too much with it. Now, fortunately enough with Manjaro, you can roll back to previous versions and, with version, uh, and in distributions like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, uh, they tend to stay at, you know, significant, they stay, they do snapshots, so they do versions and they jump to versions which should be better tested. Um, I have found that historically Linux Mint is actually quite good when it comes to Caden Live because the Linux Mint uh, codecs, which are different from the ones included with Ubuntu, are just a little bit more stable that I've noticed. However, that's uh, the overall situation across Ubuntu, across Mint, and even across like Manjaro and the lot. Uh, the quality of the codecs has massively improved over the past few years, so it shouldn't depend 
uh, on your distribution as to how likely you are to be able to achieve this effect and how likely you are to have a stable full featured version of Caden Live. In short, I hope this has been some help in uh, just showing you how you can uh, manipulate green screen effects or chroma key effects uh, just for a little bit of fun. Uh, you can also use these effects to uh, to have a big green screen set behind you and then you can put various different backdrops. Um, you can pretend that you're in Delaware, for example. So uh, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching and um, happy Halloween. I thought instead of doing some silly novelty video, I actually just might tie it in and show you guys how to do something useful. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.